In this video I will demonstrate adaptive process mode modeling introduced in Simca 18. The intent is to address challenges of continuous cell culture processes and other processes where combinations of dynamic and steady state phases occur. So with adaptive process mode the user can now combine dynamic and steady state process data in a flexible way. As before, PLS and OPLS models are available on the batch evolution level for dynamic phases. The new feature implies that PCA is enabled as a batch evolution model alternative for a steady state phase in a batch project. It is also possible to combine dynamic and steady state phases at the batch level when computing the batch level model. The example dataset is an amber perfusion experiment, which was performed on an amber 250 HT perfusion system. The experiment has 8 batches and 14 parameters were measured a couple of times each day, like glutamine, glutamate, glucose, lactate, ammonia and so on. There are two phases which are called growth and production in this example, where the first one is a dynamic phase and the second one is recognized as a steady state phase. Now let's see what this new functionality looks like. We depart from an existing batch model comprising two batch evolution models. The first is an OPLS model for the growth phase and the second one is an OPLS model for the production phase. By highlighting the BEM line in the project window and by clicking on the scores button on the home tab we can create batch control charts for each phase. To the left we see the control chart for the growth phase and to the right we see the control chart for the production phase. And here we see the quote unquote problem by using OPLS for the steady state phase. The control chart suggests the phase is not at steady state but rather has a dynamic touch to it. The score values are increasing with increasing cell culture time. For a steady state phase you would expect that not to be the case. You would expect a close to horizontal appearance for all batch trajectories. And this is where the new stuff in SIMC 18 comes into play, because as of SIMC 18 it is now possible to replace the OPLS model by a PCA model to account for the fact that a certain phase is steady state and not dynamic in nature. The easiest way to invoke the new functionality is to depart from the existing batch model. By selecting new as BEM1 we create an identical workset. By clicking finish an identical BEM is computed by Simca. And now by clicking or expanding this plus sign we can expand and see the details for the two OPLS models. The way to replace OPLS by PCA for the second phase is simply to select this model here, highlight it and via the model type button select PCA. As we can see on the highlighted model line it is now indicated that the PCA model will be calculated. In order to fit the PCA model we may click two first components. First the summary of fit plot is thrown up but I will minimize it as I am for the moment more interested in the information provided by the project window. So now we see that we have one OPLS model fitted for the dynamic phase, the growth phase, and another PCA model fitted to the steady state phase, the production phase. Let's create batch control charts so we can compare both sets of models. I start by creating batch control charts for batch model 1 containing the two OPLS models. And then I create similar control charts for the fresh batch model 2 containing one OPLS model and the new PCA model. In order to simplify model comparison I will also tile the two windows side by side. Uh, and now to the left we have the fresh batch model and to the right the already existing batch model. It does not take long to realize the impact of PCA for the second phase as the batch trajectory curves are now close to horizontal, reflecting the steady state nature of this phase. This change in score plot appearance also has a bearing over onto model interpretation. Let's create loading plots for the second phase and arrange them side by side so we can compare the OPLS model and the PCA model for the second phase. 
Evidently, variables that had a limited contribution to the opilus model, like ammonia and potassium, now have a much stronger impact in the PCA model. The reason for this change is that with OPLS, or also PLS for that matter, we are forcing the model to capture variability in the process parameters that are linearly correlated with the time or the maturity Y variable. In case of a steady state situation, no such strong correlations with time should exist in the process data. So with PCA we get a more adequate description of the correlation structure among the process variables in the steady state phase. And this improved description also enables improved model interpretation. So, summing up this short demo on the new feature in SIMC18, we can say that the great benefit is here an improved modeling of steady state phases in batch projects. We can create one single project file for the entire process in which we combine dynamic and steady state phases in a single project configuration. The new functionality is also considered on the batch level, which means that prediction of critical quality attributes is possible for all phases. This is of relevance for any process with a steady, non-varying or continuous phase. And this is what I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you find it useful.